What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, we're going to be doing the must invest of 2024, and in this video specifically guys, we're going to be going over some underrated, but must invest characters that you want to be building for Demonic Beast related content, and for Chaos Battle PvP. Now you guys might be wondering, Amazing, why would I want to build characters for Chaos Battle or Demonic Beast, and I'm going to actually explain that right now. So we have Chaos Battle going on right now in PvP um, at this very moment, and this is not something that as a newer player you're really going to be able to do much in but i want to do a video here uh explaining some of the characters that are really used in this mode so that you are able to build them and be successful in this mode and be able to score a lot of uh you know points right there and get a high rank for some free gems and then the other thing right there that i want to cover as well in terms of units guys is going to be units that are tailor made for demonic beasts and are really really strong because of them so yeah that's pretty much the criteria for this video in terms of the must invest so let's hop in and let's talk about the first uh unit of the must invest 2024 part two all right guys so the first unit we got here on the list is actually going to be a combo of two characters right here and they start with the letter d d n we have two of them right here we have the red queen dn and the green queen dn so the valentine's queen dn and the red uh ways of the earth queen dn guys so the reason why this character is a must invest in my opinion either one of them you know either being the green or the red is because they're one of the best taunt characters in the game if not the best i would say both uh queen dn uh, and the uh, green one as well, I would say are the best taunt units in Grand Cross at the moment. Um, you know, going over in terms of PvP and PvE, they're both really, really strong variants. Now, let's actually go over the red one real quick, and I'll explain why she's good, and then we'll talk about the green one and what she does differently. Alright, so starting off with her passive here, guys, Queen of the Earth. When taking damage from the enemy, increases the hero's damage dealt by 10% up to 50, combines up to 500,000 uh, damage taken by skills and skill effects, then increases the damage dealt by 20% of the accumulated amount then decreases allies damage taken by 40 percent when the stance is active so yeah as you guys can see Dian has a lot of build up in her passive right there the more damage she takes the more damage she's gonna be able to dish out and she has a damage reduction for the team with a stance up now for her holy relic here which is another very important thing that both the Dian share is going to increase allies damage dealt by 30 percent for two turns when the hero assumes a stance all right guys so for our first skill here we have the pulverized skill so it's going to be the crazy rush pulverized and the way it works is that the more gauge you have the more damage you're going to do by 20 percent and also when you have four gauge or more and you attack with this skill you're actually going to take the gauge of the enemy when attacking now moving on we also have the stance skill here guys the spinning hammer this is going to assume a stance for two turns which increases the h related stats by 12 percent and taunts enemies so that's going to direct all damage towards dn and that's going to scale up from uh two turns to three turns 18 percent hp related and three turns 30 percent hp related right there and then moving on to her ultimate hero guys she's going to have queen's embrace which inflicts quell damage equal to 570 percent of attack on all enemies then actually heal all allies hp by 30 percent of the damage dealt and as you guys can see here the damage dealt is going to be 50 percent at six out of six per active stance on self so that's pretty much the red one right there guys now in terms of what the green one does differently the green one in my opinion is better of the two and the main reason why is because she actually has two things in her kit that make her uh better for just general content in the game now we have the pve part of her passive where in addition when the hero uses a skill in pve you gain 10 percent uh, attack related stats which is really good and then the symbol of love part of her passive here where applies symbol of love on the hero at the start of the battle and when assuming a stance the hero's uh, hp related stats are uh, increased by 20 percent and when the stance is removed the the allies actually uh critical defense will increase by 30 percent now symbol of love specifically is going to increase allies basic stats by three percent for each ally that takes damage from an enemy skill so your attack defense and and HP are actually going to increase every time an ally takes damage, including Deanne herself. So as the team is taking damage, you're going to get basic stat buildup, and this is going to be a really good, you know, option you can run on, you know, literally any demonic beast or even on a chaos PvP battle team. And so, yeah, in terms of her skills and what's actually different, guys, her single target here is just going to be straight up single target pierce, which is a little bit worse of a skill versus the other Queen Dn. So, yeah, we also have Queen Dn having an, a stance skill as well, the green one, just like the red one. Um, and the way this one works is that it assumes a stance when, uh, uh, which taunts enemies and decreases damage taken by 40% when attacked for two turns. Um, the higher the, the rank of the actual taunt right here, the, uh, the amount of ultimate move gauge will actually be decreased. So, yeah, as you can see, you're at the rank two, you actually take one ultimate move gauge whenever 
whenever they attack you and then at the rank three we're gonna have two gauge whenever attacked and you're taunting with the damage reduction so you still have that damage reduction that you would have got you know with the other queen dm but you actually gain it now with this one and you have a bunch of basic stats with the critical defense up if you do get your stats removed as well so yeah, no, overall, guys, I mean, th those are really the only things that are different about the DNs. You know, the Holy Relic is going to be the same. The Ultimate's going to be the same. So those things I don't really have to mention, but that's why this character is so strong. Both of them having taunts and being able to do what they do. They both have ways of doing gauge reduction, and they also both have ways of providing support for the team, either through, you know, this DN being able to provide damage reduction and the damage dealt, or this DN being able to provide uh, basic stats, damage dealt, damage reduction, and also the fact you get a uh, critical defense as well so yeah guys that is going to be the character right there let's actually move on from dn and talk about another really good character that i think a lot of you guys might not have fully built yet that is a must build in 2024 or must invest and that's actually going to be freyer so for you guys that don't know freyer is a ragnarok character not actually a part of the seven deadly sin story but he is a character that released and is one of the best pve units in the game and is a viable option in chaos battle as i mentioned um because of the fact that he has ways of support the team even though he's not actually gonna be a main dps in pvp let's say all right so let's actually go over his kit here guys so for his passive right here uh divine flames allies become immune to ignites that's actually a pretty good effect considering you know some characters in chaos battle or even in general you know demonic beast content look at like the nidhogg demonic beast guys where when you get ulted you get ignited and then also when skull and hottie where flirts two and three they start to apply ignites on you you know you have that and then in pvp with like mon speed relic or when you're facing a keo you're going to be able to block those ignites right there and it applies blessing of light which increases all the hero stats by 15 percent for two turns at the start of the allies turn then applies the same effect again every single every two turns and increases all stats of allies by five percent for five turns whenever blessing of light is removed so you're going to be able to pretty much support the team while also providing all stats for himself through blessing of light all right so now that we've gone over his passive there guys let's actually move on and talk about his skills that he has so he actually has a cancel stance single target skill right here it's just going to be cancel stance on the rank two and three and go up to 500 percent of attack now his second skill here is going to be the one that does the main amount of damage for him which is going to be the cleave effect which is additional damage equal to 75 percent of critical damage minus 100 percent, which is really good because it's pretty much your guaranteed critting in a sense even though it's not counting as a crit it's going to be 75 percent of the damage you would have done as a critical hit and so that scales up from 200 300 and 500 percent of attack which is a very very strong skill that fur is able to use and then moving on to his ultimate here guys this is going to be the second death ultimate in the game the first one being the original the one escanor and freyer is able to do the exact same thing so death is going to be a hundred percent of final damage as additional damage and random on death so it's going to be hitting pretty much anybody that you know uh once you do kill one person with the first hit the second hit will hit another person or if it's on that same target the second hit will hit the same target this is going to be a way you're able to do double damage caps in demonic beast or even in pvp where you know you have a very tanky opponent or you have two enemy uh you know characters that you need to take out fair ultimate can hit one and the second one and then you're going to be able to take them out instantly and then moving on to his holy relic guys this is what makes him viable in pvp in my opinion on a chaos battle centric team and the main reason why is because it increases allies uh applicable allies basic stats by five percent and damage double single target attacks by five percent for each applicable ally on the battlefield either being ragnarok or unknown allies so you're able to run them on two different team comps in that chaos battle setting or if you're in demonic beast battle you're able to run them alongside ragnarok or unknown related characters to get that extra basic stats and single target damage to boost you know the allies and also freyer's damage himself all right guys now the last character here that i have that i want to recommend for also either chaos battle or uh demonic beast battle guys is actually going to be the blue chad king in grand cross now uh, for you guys that don't know blue chat king was one of those characters back in the day that was actually able to do really good work on demonic beast and even still to this day is a very good unit now uh this blue king was actually really strong because there was a team uh called the patience team that allowed free to play players to be able to beat floor one of each of the hardest demonic beasts at the time and so king is still a viable character in that sense if you want to run you know the patience team with the blue brawler bond and chad king if you guys just look it up you can look up you know chad king demonic beast and you'll see a bunch of teams with that kind of setup and so i'll explain why king works in that way and you know what he's able to do 
Alright guys, so with this passive right here, Pauling Garden, when the hero uses a skill, increases damage dealt to enemies by 30%, then creates a barrier around allies equal to 50% uh, of damage dealt for one turn, and then decrease damage taken by 100%, and increase damage dealt by 25% for the characters in that shield. So King is able to provide a shield, guys, that gives you the amount of damage dealt you dealt with, the, with your attack skills as a protective shield for you that also allows you to deal more damage as well. So when you actually coincide this with King's Holy relic which actually adds on more to that it's actually going to increase the hero's damage dealt by 15 percent and increase basic stats of allies protected by the hero's barrier by 15 percent as well so you get a lot more damage dealt and basic stats when attacking as you have the shield up from king and so hopping into his skills here in terms of what he's able to do guys we have the first skill being the power strike aoe which is going to deal damage equal to 110 percent of attack on all enemies power strike is going to be additional damage equal to the enemy's resistance so the higher resistance the more it does and it's going to scale from 110 165 and 275 percent of attack and then moving on to his second skill here, guys, we have the Sever AoE, which is going to be 120%, 180 and 300% of attack. And it's going to be three times critical chance increase. And then moving on to his ultimate here, guys, we have the Remove Debuffs from Allies and Buffs from Enemies. And for each buff removed, increase damage taken by enemies whose buffs were removed by 40% for one turn. Then inflicts damage equal to 600% of attack on all enemies. So King was one of those characters back in the day that really was really good on Demonic Beast. And I still think to this day, if you want to take advantage of the Patience team, he is a very viable character and still worthwhile for Demonic Beast related content. And you can still technically use him in Chaos Battle as well as a protective sh uh, shielding character and he's pretty good for that as well on select teams all right guys moving on from that now we actually do have the three demonic beast characters that i want to talk about and we'll talk about them in in order of the actual demonic beasts that are available so the first one that is going to be talked about is going to be Megelda. now um the blue Megelda right here is the main one that's used for it the red one is actually just a universal demonic beast unit and is also another one i would recommend you guys build but in terms of talking about the blue one here and why you want to be building this one she's gonna make your bird runs very very consistent consistent guys in what she's providing for the team all right so hopping into her passive here guys want to come with me in the bird demonic beast battle every time an ally's remaining hp is full applies one effect on the hero which increases all stats by eight percent for five turns stacking up to five times so you're going to be able to get up to 40 percent all stats on all your allies by uh, having their hp fill up now that might be a little bit of a, a harder thing to do in the demonic beast and you might not think it's very consistent to do guys but the way you make it consistent is going to be through the holy relic where when the hero uses a recovery skill in the bird demonic beast removes one debuff from allies then applies one effect on the hero which increases all stats by eight percent stacking up to five times and this does not uh, actually stack with the unique ability but you're going to be able to pretty much force the the main ability a lot faster just by using the recovery skill in the first place so a very very strong uh holy relic at that and the way you can use Megelda uh, in advance, guys, is because her relic comes from the bird, You'll what you'll have to do is you'll actually have to use her and grind the bird till you have enough to be able to get her relic. And then from there, your runs are going to be a lot more smoother and they'll be a lot easier in terms of actually clearing. And in terms of her skills here, guys, in terms of what she's able to do, she has Amplify Single Target, which is going to be 30% damage uh, dealt per uh, buff on active self. And uh, Amplify is going to scale from the uh, 180, 270, and 450% of attack. And then moving on to her second skill here, guys, this is the recovery skill she's going to use to be able to heal the allies and provide the all stats with her holy relic. Heals HP of all allies equal to 130% of uh, attack and rejuvenates for one turn. It's going to add additional recovery equal to 60% of the HP recovered at the start of every turn. For every turn, uh, rejuvenates available. It's going to be 130% of attack, 195%, and then 325% of attack. And then moving on to her ultimate here, guys, this is going to be the power strike single target ultimate, which is going to deal additional damage equal Equal to uh enemies that have higher resistance so the higher the resistance the more damage dealt this ultimate is going to do all right so that is going to be the valkyrie Megelda right there um i will briefly cover the red Megelda here guys i don't want to go too in depth with this character but she is another option that you can run on the bird and also for other demonic beasts as her passive here pretty much allows you to use it in demonic beast battle but it still you know gives you the option to be able to run it in multiple different demonic beasts now for her passive here increases allies hp related stats by six percent up to 30 and fills one orb in the ultimate move gauge every time the hero uses a skill in demonic beast battle 
allies who have their debuffs removed from the hero skill will recover 20% of their maximum HP. So this Miguel is not able to heal and her holy relic from the blue one does not work with this one in terms of being able to heal uh, for all demonic beasts. And so you're only able to really use uh, just the passive here and this cleanse card to be able to heal allies through that. So that's kind of the way this Miguel works is she's not as insane as the blue one in terms of bird, but you are able to use this one in all other demonic beasts. Alright guys, so the next character in the list that I have in terms of the actual Demonic Beast himself, so I mentioned the three Demonic Beast units at the beginning, so Miguel, duh, we have the second one gonna be Jormungandr. So, uh, Jormungandr is gonna be a really strong character, she is made for the Aetherner Demonic Beast or the Deer Demonic Beast battle, and she is really, really good for it. In terms of what uh, Jormungand is able to do, guys, we, uh, if we read her passive here, at the start of every turn in Demonic Beast Battle, Aetherner applies an effect on all allies which increases all stats by 30% for two turns, and if three allies each use skills once or more, the same effect is applied to all allies again, and the effect is removed from heroes who use skills after the effect is applied, and the effect applies a uh, once per condition. So you're going to be able to pretty much stack up to 60% all stats uh, pretty much every turn as long as you keep following the rules of the passive. And then moving on guys, if you are able to clear deer enough with just this regular passive, you can unlock her holy relic where it removes debuffs from all allies and increases ranks of all skills when each three of the allies use one or more skills in the Aetherner Demonic Beast battle. So you're able to get rank ups on the skills and cleansing allies debuffs. In terms of what her skills are able to do here, guys, we have her single target here being a healing ally skill. So inflicts damage equal to 200% of attack on one enemy and restores HP of the ally with the lowest HP ratio by 80% of the damage dealt. And that's actually going to become uh, all allies on the rank 2 of 30% damage dealt and then 40% damage dealt all allies with 400% of attack right there. All right, guys, now moving on to her second skill. She has the buff strip, which is going to be very useful in the Demonic Beast battle for Aetherian because the boss is going to have some uh, points in the fight where he has, uh, you know, buffs on himself and also uh, on the rank 3 where you're able to cancel stance which could be viable in some of the stages as well. And then moving on to her ultimate here guys, she's going to be able to provide all allies damage dealt up to 42% at 6 out of 6 and inflicts damage equal to 945% of attack on one enemy. So yeah, no, Jormungand is going to be the best unit pretty much for Aetherner and you want to definitely run her uh, if you're getting into the game and just trying to clear the Aetherner Demonic Beast. Now moving on to the last character guys that I have in terms of the list for Demonic Beast specifically is going to be Red Thonar. So as I mentioned, the Bird, Deer, and uh, Skull and Hadi are going to be the three Demonic Beasts that as a newer player or even just getting into the game, you want to be focusing on. And each of these characters are must invest because they're made or uh, tailor made for each Demonic Beast. And so Wander Thonar is going to be the one that's tailor made for the Skull and Hadi Demonic Beast. So let's actually read what she's able to do. All right, so former passive here in Skull and Hadi Demonic Beast battle increases the hero's damage dealt when using ultimates by 200% and increases allies damage dealt using single target attacks by 30% increases allies attack related stats by 40% for three turns every three times they inflict damage on the enemy so once you do attack them three times you're actually going to cycle 40% attack related stats for three turns which is very very good now once you do clear skull and hottie enough guys with the wanderer thonar you're actually going to unlock her holy relic where both increases allies HP related stats by 10% up to four times and fills allies ultimate move gauge by one whenever the hero uses skills in the Skull and Hottie Demonic Beast battle. So as you are using skills with Wanderer Thonar, you're actually going to be able to rush ultimate for the entire team while also giving them a lot more HP related stats, meaning they can life steal, start a turn heal, and also just have a lot more general HP to tank. Moving on in terms of what our skills are able to do here, guys, we have our single target being a cancel stance on the rank two. Now the disable stance skills effect doesn't actually work. It's only the first part here where it's removed stance. So even though this is a debuff, it doesn't necessarily matter too much right there. And then moving on to her second skill, she has single target gauge reduction, which is going to be one gauge on the rank one and two, and then three gauge on the rank three. And then moving on to our ultimate here, guys, this is not actually a, a good ultimate for uh, Skull and Hadi because it is weak point and you're not able to debuff him. But remember that in the passive, it says that uh, when increases the hero's damage dealt using their ultimate move by 200% um, because of the fact that the ultimate itself is not actually very strong uh, against the boss itself. Alright guys, so that is going to be the video right there for the must invest characters that I have with 2024 part 2. Let me know if you guys want to hear more characters that I actually have that I can let you know that are must invest. Because I know there's still a ton more characters that I haven't even mentioned in these videos guys. That are still very very good that you guys want to be investing in. So let me know in the comment section below if you guys want to see more videos like this. And that's going to be it. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one man. Peace out. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day man. See you later guys.